there. Well, happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's May 1st, 2020. I know. Oh my God. Like we're almost halfway in of the year. year. Yes. Yeah. And so first of all, I want to just thank you for participating and kicking off the month with me. It means so much and very dear to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, uh, yeah, for those of you that are tuning in, this is the beautiful, the lovely Stacey Ike. Um, this, we, we have so many different layers and titles. <laughs> we may not dive into all of them today, but you know, we'll give you guys a little. I little like your top. That's super cute. Oh, I have to show up. Cause you know, I was I'm sorry, sorry. sorry, I was like, but that's one of the layers, fashion. Sorry. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, we can definitely talk about fashion all the time. So um, definitely, you guys drop questions in the chat. Um, we definitely have some time for Q and A towards the end. But I always like to start conversations and spaces with a moment of gratitude. So, um, dear God, thank you for bringing us in this space right now. We are all here and just ready to receive and learn from each other. We're so happy and grateful for all the great things that you're doing in our life, and that you are really just being able to really just give us your strength and just give us peace in this time and just appreciate the small things and appreciate just all of the things that we have and just being able to push through and be victorious in this um, crazy season that we're in. So um, our eyes and ears are open and we just wanna have a good time and just allow uh, us, the conversation to just flow. And so I hope everyone gets what they came to this conversation to receive and let's go, amen. 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 Awesome. So the whole purpose of this mastermind series is for one, it's Precious Appreciation Month. Some of you may not even know that's a real holiday, but it is. You can Google Every it. Um, it's been an established holiday for about three or four years now. And every every month I find ways to show my appreciation. It's not necessarily about me, but it's more so of like sharing parts of my journey and experiences so that you guys can learn from them. And so this month, I wanted to really include people that I connected with over my journey and really highlight the how to pivot with faith and finesse. Mm -hmm. Because pivoting is such an um, adulting thing that um, you know we've been figuring out. Sure. I'm just blessed to be connected to people that are committed to figuring it out yeah so um essentially you know i believe we were meant to be in community and learn from each other and so here we are mm -hmm. so of course the first question i always want to start the conversation off with how we connected on this journey before we talk about pivoting so i mean would you like for me to give my theatrical and depth <laughs> you know version or you know Maybe you actually probably can tell the, the story better. This than is Precious Appreciation Month. I wouldn't mind your version. I can chime in when necessary, but I, I'm definitely down for that. <laughs> okay, guys. So um, post-college, this is 2013. Wow. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Um, Stacy and I were selling jeans together in First Colony Mall in Sugarland, Texas. Yeah. yeah. We both had three. Yeah, we both had degrees and um, no job, no real job. Um, she had just got back from Australia and um, yeah, we were the two black girls that opened up on Mondays and, and Tuesdays, I think. Saturday. It was. Oh, Saturday. Something, Saturday. something crazy Saturday. like that, yeah. Yeah, um, and so of course, you know, naturally, black girl magic, we just kind of cleaned together. But we, I do believe the passion for fashion is what connected us. For um, sure. But um, yeah, we got to know each other. Like that was like September, I think through December. And she had confided in her dreams and what she was working towards and entertainment. And she, she got an a internship with Yahoo. And she was like, man, I don't know if I should go. And I'm like, what? You totally have to go. She's like, oh, I don't have a job. I don't have this, I don't have that. And so, you know, you go through all those different things. of like, do I take the risk or not? And so um, I helped her pack her suitcase and put her some looks and some outfits. I remember they called so okay go ahead go ahead no no go ahead who called what i i was just gonna say i went to la like a couple mm. months before right. i had lied to our boss and i don't even know what i told him it was my birthday present i don't know what i said i think it was something about my birthday though and so i went to la for a week met with the yahoo team and they're like hey you don't live out here so if you move like we got you so that's what i came back with it was nothing official on paper which i learned in 
retrospect is ridiculous, but I get why my mind went to where it was. And, um, you know, when I, when I decided to move after like several, you know, conversations with you, my parents and my other really close friends and just like my spirit, I moved. And when I got there, I didn't have a job. Right. That was the kicker. That was the, <laughs> Hey, sorry, we switched teams on you. And the person who promised you something is not here anymore. Yeah. It was like a matter of weeks. But I remember, I'm like, we laid out the outfit. We thought about the Instagram caption. You know, that's when Instagram God. started. Had just started. We had that one pose. You hit, and it was the sidewalk picture. Everybody yeah. wanted to get on the sidewalk, get the natural lighting. My gosh. There was a lot of effort. A lot of effort and time to do that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's essentially how our relationship kind of kicked off. And I was her mm-hmm. virtual friend stylist. For like two years or so yeah um, and as um as we both just grew individually in our careers um we I, I i believe at that time i was um still figuring life out freelancing and connecting and networking with other seasoned entrepreneurs really getting my business acumen acumen up and mm-hmm. so um i was able to just kind of start helping Stacey out on the business side, because I mean, LA is a different beast and she can share the details about that. But um, not to get too much into the weeds, um, shortly after, I want to say we, I think, I think gradually like 2015 was when I kind of, she started kind of seeking advice on business and things like that. Mm -hmm. 2016 really ampled up on content creation. And then 2017, Oprah said, what's up? Yeah, I uh, I remember, I mean, I don't know where you want to go in terms of the journey, and you can definitely fill this in too, but I know you asked, why did I bring you on the journey? And I was really thinking about it, because I feel like there was a certain answer then, which hasn't really changed me. I would love to know the difference, you know? Um, I, I really don't remember what it was then, but I do remember now, like, I probably will figure it out, but I just know now a lot of why I brought someone like you as well as you specifically on the journey was because I didn't want the journey to feel like it had to like it for everybody else. You know, I had already watched and been inspired by so many people that I love, which is amazing. But I was trying to prove not only to myself, but like to other people that it was possible to create your own path and to bring my friend from Houston, who I just knew we had like a root connection. I was like, this is kind of bigger than just me coming to LA and a successful moment happens. I was like, well, first of all, I want this journey to be fun. And like, it's so stiff. It's so hard. It's just, it's all this like talk and litigation and paperwork. And, and, you know, it's a lot of tough stuff that comes with being in the business, um, any business really, but you know, there's the business side to every, every part of the fun and the entertainment and whatever. So instead of like being around and surrounded by people who kept it business 100 of the time, I needed to make sure I could also release and express and feel free and relax and love and like laugh and also still know that so much was going to get done because we were really rooted in like so much of our work and because our work became play it was really like a incredible combination so i like when i saw that question i was like wow like i think it was a lot and i'm sure that's still i know that i've said that before but i think i'm more clear on just knowing like it was about me making sure that the journey didn't have to look a certain type of way right you're definitely the woman that designs her own you know you have your own recipe for success which I think we all should do. You know, we take pieces from other people's journeys and testimonies, and then we figure out what works best for us. Because right. there's only one you. Right. And, um, I can honestly say, you know, I'm a jumper. I think during that time when, yeah, Stacey asked me to come out to LA for a couple of weeks for um, her show on the OWN Network to just kind of support her in that transition. And a um, couple of weeks turned into a couple of years. <laughs> was it a couple? It was out a couple of years. It was. Um, it was a full year. It was a full year. It was a couple of years. People, I'm like, me. you were in LA. I literally came home to to unpack and wash and pack and leave. That is hilarious. My apartment, guys. That's I'm hilarious. Like, I'm not here. I got rid of my apartment. Got rid of my car. Right, right. I committed to the journey. And I think at that time I was considering law school. I was like, maybe I should go to law school. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was a lot of self-discovery going on simultaneously, yeah. um, which is just, you know, in hindsight, we just appreciate the journey and just falling in love with the process. Yeah. Um, so I want to take this moment to share my appreciation for you. Um, I wrote down three things that I learned from you that I want to share. Mm-hmm. Um, 
with everyone that's tuning into the conversation. So Stacey has not heard any of these things. So she's probably like, what is she talking about? So yeah. um, the first thing I learned. Sorry uh, about that. I, uh, right. I'm like, and I'm learning. Okay. Sorry about that. So you kind of already hinted on it, but um, just the importance of creating a safe space to think and speak freely. Mm. I did not really understand the true value of that. And then just also knowing that like, you know, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, entertainers and like how they're like off the wall or crazy or acting Hollywood and all these different things. When honestly, the whole acting Hollywood, people are just trying to protect their peace. Sure, sure, so sure. Changes of energy and conversations and interactions and having to manage those engagements in addition to like listening to yourself like it's just right. it's a right. lot of things to process at one time because life moves so fast in that industry right that i have a newfound appreciation and understanding when people are like i gotta have my people with me like right so um that was one thing second was every minute counts where <laughs> you are at an event and it's like, oh my God, I'm parking, I'm trying to park, I'm trying to do this, but we need right. to do this time and da 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 da. Or like, say if you're rushing somewhere, you may go to the restroom and be like, oh, I just bumped into this person and, you know, should we leave? Should we stay? Oh, okay, well, let's, <laughs> more round. let's work the room one more time. You know, it was like every little minute. Right, right, right. It was always like, let's take advantage of every single moment. Yeah. So because I'm like, I don't know, why was she She's like, and it was just intuition that you have of like, right. no, let's every, every minute, or it'll be the time where we're like, okay, we have 10 things to do and we only have three hours. Mm -hmm. And then Stacey says, okay, well, three hours is actually um, 180 minutes. So if we're in that area, then technically if we, <sighs> the location to hit, you know, so, you know, the strategy with really utilizing every single minute, uh, she, she definitely made me a believer. That That's so funny. Wow. Um, and lastly is uh, just the balance of being able to capture the moment and be present. I feel mm. like you definitely mastered that because there's a lot of moving parts just in one day, but I still feel like regardless, I don't know if it was our communication styles or just our trust in each other, but we were able to like do what we have to do for society and the people but right, still, right, right. Right. You know, keep our own sanity and do our own thing sure. and I feel like you're just very conscious of that you're like mm -hmm. I know content creation is part of my work and what I need to do but I'm also going to be present and have this 45 minute conversation with this random person I just met because they're dope and I'm like yeah. okay we this this was this was a lot this is a lot <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> It really, it, I think, and ever, and I really appreciate those things. I think um, a lot of those skills were um, things that I might not even have realized until I had to, yeah. because even hearing some of them, I'm like, wow, like that is a part of me. And I, it comes out in certain situations, like especially the second and third one, but to highlight the third one, I think that was about us having like a certain synergy about people and just having the same belief in like being out and being with people like we kind of both would look at each other and be like oh it's time to go home we kind of both like look at each other and be like oh that's perfect time to like get a photo moment and still respect everyone we're meeting and still like it was just a that was that's actually like one of my favorite things about being with people that you know know how to do it too or know how to encourage you when you do it and you can help them when they do it because man when you're with the person who's like no let's just like let's do this and let's do that it's like they're not seeing the same thing you're saying yeah i mean they just know it's like just knowing the room and being appreciative of the room is like okay i really need to jam with these people i do have to get a photo do want to get to eat okay should we get a drink okay it's like i mean all of those things you're thinking about at one time there's so many decisions yeah. that are at once yeah yeah but so, that's 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 into my next question because i also realized that wow, someone is as crazy as I am on the bold and fearless. Uh -huh. It's like, let's sure. try and see, you know, sure. a lot of people are not like that. And so I'm definitely grateful for that. So yeah. give us the time. Of course, we know like pivoting is just a part of life that we, we just now know. But yeah. what was the time where you had just like crazy faith, crazy belief, 
and you finesse the situation and you were like, oh, wow, that actually happened like I thought it would or even better? Um, I think one of the times that I remember the most because there's, I think the, mm, yeah, fit, having like a little bit of faith is really the key in general. But I just remember summer of 2017, we had a meeting with a friend of ours uh, who was, you know, giving us advice on, we, I just done the first media brunch as a team. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I was kind of like, we were twiddling our thumbs a little bit of like, we think we should do another one. We're not really sure. Does that make sense? Is it too soon? Like we wanted to have the right strategy in place, whatever. And so we met up with him and he was like, I don't really know what y'all are waiting for. Just do it again. And I'm like, oh, is it ringing on your computer? Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, and so he, what, yeah. So anyway, he was like, I don't know what you guys are waiting for. Just do it again. And I think that was probably one of those moments. I just remember we dropped the flyer the, the first day of that month because it was during Independence Day and it was October 1st. And like the event was October 22nd. And so I just remember the month was full of crazy faith. It was full of a lot of crazy decisions, a lot of fast decisions, a lot of like boss decisions, a lot of scary decisions. Um, I had my best friend come out there. I had like, you know got some great panel like everything about that event it was the OTS media brunch it was super branded in a way that was like super special everything from the venue to every I mean it was just it was like very ridiculous in terms of like not having that much money and not having that many resources but also having everything you needed because you always had people who had your back like everything from the person who helped us with the event the venue to um the caterers to everything everything about it just like came in sync but I just remember that whole month was full of crazy faith because of how fast we decided to do it, excuse me, of how like sure we were to do it, but also how it just was like, okay. Like there, it was just, it was kind of one of those first, okay, we're going. Our thought process, like, you know, cause I know a lot of us will say like, we want to do a big event or we want, we have a big project and it's like, how is this the time? And most of the time it boils down to like money or like needing yeah. resources. Right, right. Um, I'm trying to remember what our thought process or how we even came to the decision of let's do it. Um, I want to say, I think we started with what we had and then we just kind of like built upon that. Yeah. I mean, that around a month before that, we were already kind of like, all right, what would be the next thing? Where would we want to go from here? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to remember like, that was also in the new team building phases. So I just got a new assistant, just got a new production team, just got like um, a social person, like different different layers had been added. And so I just, it was like that build, that slow buildup was like, what are we gonna do with such a dynamic team? Like something major. And like, we didn't even, yeah, it could have been slow, but we were like, no, nah, we're just gonna do like the biggest thing we can do. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we got the people, we'll figure it out. And I really feel like it was like, we had the people. Um, to figure it out because yeah, well, I think a lot we of it. definitely had the support and yeah. I think we knew that it was gonna be crazy. Right. But we also just believed in ourselves enough that we could pull right. it off. We're just not gonna not let it be less than great. Right, right, right. So, yeah. I think it was just our strive for excellence too. Yeah. Like just yeah. commitment to excellence and like let's just figure it out, get it done. Um and definitely stretched us yeah. for sure. For sure. Uh, from as leaders. You know, just being able to, because it was a big event. Well, yeah, it really was. It I'm really like, was. I have to, um, you guys can go to stacyhack.com and check it out. Um, <laughs> so she has a beautiful, beautiful website. Uh, but yeah, the OTS Media Brunch was definitely one for the books. And I can say that with pivoting within that direction, I think we just more so leaned on uh, trusting ourselves mm -hmm. and like knowing that the people that we had around us I think we vetted them very well too. So right, right, right. Put ourselves on the back for being, <laughs> you know. No it was really important to have like a good. I mean, I just like love working with great people. I mean, who doesn't? Obviously, but it's like it's just important to have a connection and a really a through line through the people that you're working with. Like, what is the common denominator here? Is it right. trying to get paid? I'm just trying to do this, or is there something you want to build? Is there an intention here? And I think that's yeah. been the biggest yeah 
And one comment on that too, just with people in general, and this, yeah, I guess this can be just general advice. I think when people reach out and want to serve that you should come in there with a servant mindset versus how you can just benefit because I definitely could say servant leadership and for you too, like you put a lot of sweat equity in uh, with building relationships and doing pro bono work and all of those different things. And some people come into um, intern or volunteer roles with ulterior motives. And um, I just think we ask the right questions. Thank God mm -hmm. that's what you do for a living. So right, right, right. Yeah. questions is definitely important. So sure. transitioning to even something uh, you know, we, I feel like we learn even more in the tough times. So what was a time where you had to pivot, but you just like, your faith was kind of wavering of like, mm, I'm really not sure about this, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Although I'm, my faith is not really there, but I, I got to figure out a way to, to finesse and pivot because you felt you needed to pivot. Uh, there have, I mean, you know, first, when you like realize that you're on an entrepreneur, entrepreneur journey, you don't realize how many times that's going to happen and how many more times it's probably going to happen in the future too. So I don't, to like bring up one situation, I will say two that stick out instead of one, two that stick out is when I had to incorporate Stacey Ike Inc. That was a really, really hard time for me, even though it felt really exciting externally, like internally, it was very, what does this mean? How does this change things? Um, I was still, you know, I was still on the, I mean, still on the come up, which is an amazing moment to be like, oh, I think this is time to move your business forward. But I still didn't really feel like exact about it. I didn't feel sure. And I wasn't sure exactly what the benefits would be. I mean, it was just so many different like things that I was personally like, dealing with in my head and I'm, most of the people that are working with me at that time were also very aware because it was like okay we're trying to help we want to feed her but also ultimately it's her decision so you know I ended up making the decision to incorporate and I think in this moment I I do feel grateful for it but I still go through moments of that because it was very expensive and it's still something that you know you have to keep up and for me it added some pressure um, to make sure that I kept up a certain type of brand and certain type of, um, not, not image, because I'm really not worried about that. It was more of like for myself to keep the brand going so that the cost was making sense. It was more about that. And so that was a big, hard, scary, but necessary pivot just to kind of move forward in the business. Most people, like, I'd love to hear that. Like, mo I, I need to continue to look into other creatives who have had to make the decision on what that looks like because again this is supposed to be a really exciting moment but it just can come with some like Whew, okay this is the next step and the next step isn't easy um <clears throat> probably another pivot that was challenging or has been challenging was finding out other ways to extend my gift because i you know have been in the entertainment industry for about six years now and I've been pretty successful at it. There've definitely been some really high highs and some really low lows, but I'm still very grateful for my journey. And I didn't want to like, I've, I would say that 2019, probably a little bit of like 2018 too, started exposing me to realizing there might be other parts to the, to my gift that I can, that I can like be a part of or expose myself to or learn or try. And I'm still in that process of figuring out what those exact pivots look like. But I know that you know, when you have seen yourself do something for so long and you realize I don't have to just do this, there are other parts of me, that's another pivot. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be confident in the gift that it doesn't, that your gift would not just make room for you in one area. Of course, it makes room for you in other areas. Every area your gift is allowed to go to, so are you. And so learning that pivot is, is very challenging, but it's something I'm still like kind of in the trenches of figuring out, okay, how do you continue to expand wanting to connect for a living? That, that's what I love ultimately, wanting to connect, so. So after you have made the pivot and you weren't sure and you're trying to like, okay, how do I balance not being fully committed or on board, but still having to progress like and be present in a day-to-day, -day, like how are you able to manage, I guess, those emotions and, and thoughts? Was it a journaling thing? Was it you just continuously, you know, have conversations about it or educated yourself or what was it that made you push through 
the wavering of it? One of the things is stepping outside of my body and really, really realizing like nothing is that serious. And it's like, I forget to do that. And I'm telling you when I do it, I go into a very, I'm, I'm like working on making sure I don't go through the opposites of it. Because as soon as I realize like, actually none of this really, really, really matters that much. You're like, okay, well, I'm just not about to, I'm not going to do all this stuff that I might've normally done or feel like I have to do so I can feel my way through this. It really doesn't matter that much. I'm not saying that like, it doesn't matter, but I'm saying it doesn't matter in the grander scheme of things. Like genuinely everything could crumble. And if you're alive, it really doesn't matter. It feels crazy to say, it feels crazy to experience for sure. But you just start noticing that like, hmm, is this really like as big of a deal as I think it is, you know, and is this really, and like, that's something I, I still work on and still go through in waves because it, some days it helps me calm down. Some days it makes me think like, oh, some things aren't even worth pursuing, which I don't ever want to like, per, like encourage that or say that's the truth. But I think it just kind of hones me in on the full negative or full fear space. So sometimes it definitely, it's been journaling. I, it's so funny. I saw myself, I was going through my phone yesterday and like trying to delete some stuff off. And I saw this video of me like <laughs> recording myself saying like, Hey guys, so I know I got on Instagram yesterday and I was kind of a little down. I was talking about how things are not working out, but I realized all I needed was a four hour journaling session and I'm fine. And it was like in 2016. I was like, you're so weird. Oh wow. And that's like definitely something that I um, have, you know, I, try to really put as much effort into as I can to really write things down. I take a lot of notes. Like I have way too many notes on my phone. I really got to figure that out <laughs> because I'm like, you need to go back through these. Uh, but I take a lot of notes. I, I try to document where my mind and heart is at a specific time. So I know where I left it. And if I ever need to go back to that, or if I need to like pivot from that and not come back, whatever that is, but if it's, it's for a reference point. So I think conversations for sure. Um, talking to God about things, talking to God about everything, talking to my family, friends, and then just realizing at the end of the day, nothing really is as serious as we think it is. Man, that's so, so true. Yeah. And just as like perfectionists or just even as creatives, you know, we want things done a certain way. And mm -hmm. when things don't feel right, we're like, what? And it's that, that balance of like having to really assess and prioritize like what's most important right now mm -hmm. and also knowing that um even when like we're we're allowed to feel things yeah of course <laughs> we're allowed to yeah, of feel negative emotions and like go through that but we just have to make sure that we're making decisions out in faith and not in fear yeah and you can be scared you just got to do it scared because all those scenarios that you said like you identified like I wasn't all the way there, but I still did it. Mm -hmm, and so sure. um, I think that's something to appreciate and, um, and value. Yeah, for sure. I think it's like, I don't think it's even possible to ever really be anywhere. I don't even think just the human body, the mind, like we're not really programmed to, that's why we have to kind of reprogram and relearn some of the parts of ourselves that tell us like this is what success means this is what productivity means this is what this means this if I'm like a little scared I shouldn't do it if I'm a little like there's things like that that I've had to reprogram to make sure I know that no sometimes a deep diving is necessary sometimes stepping back is necessary and just channeling and knowing when when to do what yeah, yeah. so let's go into Stacy the teacher because <laughs> you may not consider yourself an educator but you really are and you love mm -hmm. you love helping people and you like giving them advice. And so I want to be the student right now. And cool. I've been able to witness in real life, side by side, you being able to work rooms. Like you have this, I'd say this is like the Stacy art of finesse where you can glance at a room and make a little strategic plan, but then it comes off as very like genuine and natural. And then you circle back and you're like, okay, I done met seven people and I'm gonna have lunch with this person and I'm just follow up with this person. Be like, I don't know how your brain calculates. That's all really funny. So I don't know if you've broken down a couple tips on what we can do when we're in room because relationships is the real currency. Sure. And, you know, with social media, you just don't know, you don't know what's what. 
And yeah. I, if you have the experience of building your brand and business and network in LA, that's even a more a space where you really don't know who's who. So mm-hmm. how do you even manage genuine relationships and be able to really connect with people, not really knowing like what the trajectory could be? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, thank you for saying that, but I also like I want people to make sure they know that there is a difference between being a genuine connector and a strategic connector. Um, I think there's like, in this situation, it'd be lucky if I aligned with both, but I also want people to know, and this is something I had to make sure that I also like stepped into. I just really like talking to people at all times. Like it's like the, it's my natural, my natural juice, I guess. And so when I'm like talking to people and moving through a room, I never want people to think I'm like, trying to just move through the room in a way that's like Connie, I guess. Um, and I get, I, I've seen the difference and I'm like, okay, so as long as I'm like just making sure that I'm staying myself and then I, then I'm fine and then I feel genuine and I hope that person also feels a genuine relationship. It's a, it's a lot to manage relationships, especially like I also give a lot of grace to relationships the older I get because I managed them when I was 23, a lot different than I did when now that I do now, um, which I, never expected I thought like I would always do it in the exact same way but that's also made me feel like more and more of a human being more and more of a person more and more genuine because some relationships don't last seven years some do and so I just I try to go with the truth of what the relationship is and also know how to like water that relationship as much as I can and you know hope it continues to grow so one thing that I've learned about like one thing that I'm just big on is I'm big on compliments because I love, I, I don't even care if I'm necessarily receiving them. I just love giving them. I love giving compliments. I love seeing people smile. I love making sure people, somebody just like sees themselves through my eyes. And it's easy when you walk into a room and it's like, and it doesn't matter what city you're in, but you know, just because I live in LA, you're like, wow, everybody's like amazing and dressed up and this and that. So I just want to walk around and start like, you're amazing. You're amazing. I mean, I literally, I would, if it wasn't like the weirdest thing ever, but I've probably done it in some capacity because it's so important to me to make sure people feel the way that I feel about them. Even though if I don't even know them, like it's energy is a real thing. It's an exchange. And so when I get close to somebody and I'm like, gosh, like, I can feel that you were just like so amazing and you were probably a little insecure about your shoes or weren't sure if those are the right pants, but I want you to know, like, I see your whole look and it's amazing. And like, whatever, and just giving people that energy, keeping it for myself would be boring. And so that's my, I don't know if it's a tip, but it's like this thing that gets a lot of my conversations going. Like, I just love to compliment people and I love to spread that type of joy so that people really feel as beautiful as like, I believe that they are. And then, um, and then I just let the conversation go from there. I think after you meet somebody in whatever capacity you do, it is about following up. I mean, we talk about, we've been talking about that for 50 years, probably like it was high school advice and it was college advice and it was whatever. And like, you don't really realize how important it is. I mean, I used to have in my calendar, everybody I would meet throughout the week, I'd have a calendar like update for myself, text 10 people a week. Like I would have it in my calendar every Tuesday would go off at 10 a.m. And all day those Tuesdays, I would be like, okay, who, so who do I want to take you to text 10 people? It took a long time because I wasn't sending genuine, gen, uh, generic texts. That was the hardest thing to, not hardest, but that's another key too. These people all know each other, y'all. So just be smart about how you want to really build relationships if you're really trying to do it. I, you know, if I'm sending 10 texts a day, which is what I mean, like now at 29, it's a little harder to do that. But at 23, 24, 25, like I was absolutely sending 10 texts a week. I'm sorry, 10, a week. Or I'm sorry, yeah, I guess a day, whatever. Um, but it day. was- for the week. Yeah, right, for the week. And so it was it was pointed. So if I'm talking to Precious and I remember what Precious was talking about, I remember what her when she said her birthday was, I think she mentioned her mom was in town, blah blah blah. Like I'm going I'm picking up everything where we left off. So wait, is your mom still in town? Wait, can we get lunch? I haven't met mom. Like, what's up? Like, okay, wait, where'd you get them shoes? Did we talk about it last time? Should we go shopping together? I mean, I'm picking up the conversation where we left off because it's important. Like that's for me building. And yes, doing that to 10 people, five people, whatever that is, it takes actual thought and it takes you being genuine and it takes you remembering them. And that's another thing I just really, I'm grateful to feel like I can remember a lot of people. I don't always remember names, but I'm crazy on faces and crazy on moments and experiences as best as I can be. So if I know where we met and I know like what we talked about, I'm starting from there. And then I just want to continue to build on that. So that was like another thing that I was like big on 
big on when I mean following up, it's not, Hey, here's my real, here's my resume. Here's my, this, I'm not saying that's like not important or not relevant, but you should let your heart guide you to when it feels like it should become a business relationship. Some start like that and that's where they go. And that's totally fine. And some are just, I just want to know people and have great people in my life. So one comment and then a follow-up question. So uh-huh. uh, hearing you talk, I'm also realizing that whenever you position yourself in environments, you adapt. Like it's a mm-hmm. natural thing for you to adapt and figure out how to survive. And sure. so I think you have a natural passion to just love people and want to get to know people. But that's also how that industry really, really works. It's on relationships. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a choice. Like mm-hmm. you had to do that. And yeah. I think, you know, for us that live in different areas or maybe not in that specific industry, it's a choice for us as well, but not as demanding. Um, yeah. So I wanted to make that observation because I can definitely say um, if you position yourself there, that's the only way you're going to be able to know if you can do it. Or right. You have some people that's like, mm, that's not really me. That's not my mm-hmm. personality. Well, go ahead and throw yourself out there and then see how you adapt and change them. Sure. So, yeah. Because that's how what humans are naturally, we're built to adapt. We're so, I mean, we can see that in this time period now, but we are built to adapt. So I actually thank you for pointing that out because there were definitely a lot of moments that I'm like, I'm not sure exactly how I fit in here, but as long as I'm staying me and giving what I want to give off, then this can still work. So the follow-up question was, how do you end a conversation when it's, it's like, it's over with? How do you end it? But they, they like, they're, they're still wanting to engage and you're, it, it's over. So what are some exit strategies? We need some exit strategies. Wow. Wow. Exit strategy. Okay. I'm kind of. I think like we're in such an honest time in, in, in society now. Sometimes it's it's totally fine to say, hey, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I love getting to know you. I have your contact information, so I'm absolutely going to follow up. I do want to go ahead and check out or meet up with XYZ, two other people in this room before the party's over, before this event's over. So I'm going to hit you back, but hug, blah, 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 out. Because they're going to see you talking to other people anyway. So I think sometimes just saying like, I have to go talk to like these two other people before this is over. Yeah. you're amazing and i'm so, like getting there i think making sure the con the inf- um the exchange ends with contact information hey can i make sure i get your contact information because i know we're not gonna be able to finish the conversation here but i want to continue it and so i gotta work, like continue to do information we shouldn't specify we shouldn't say give me your number or give me your instagram we should just say give me your contact info and then let them decide mm, that's interesting well i think sometimes you should decide for them because I have decided for a lot of people what kind of content information I'm going to get. Because I know, like, people give me their cards, and I'm like, you know what I just realized? This is your card that could just be in my phone. So I'm what just going to stop. Say that? Well, I just, I, I well, I've, I've done it a few ways. So, like, one, I'll be like, don't waste your card on me, and I'll give it back. Oh, that's and a good like, one. That's a good one. I'm like, why would you, I'm like, you have this card, you need to give this to somebody who, like, literally doesn't work their phone. Like, I have to work this phone every day, so let's just take this. Sometimes I'll take a picture of their card and be like, that's perfect. Keep your card. I got your photo. I'll input all your contact information later. Then sometimes I just genuinely ask, hey, are you a texter, a talker, or an IG person? And they'll be like, oh, I love a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, perfect. Great. Let's get that going. And I mean, that's, especially when I know what you are or how you like to communicate best, it's easier for me to just be honest in that, or even for you to be honest. Because if they're like, girl, I'm a texter or, hey, I'm a texter. I'm like, perfect. Let me get your number. Let me put that down. Like, I'm good to go. Or sometimes if I know maybe the conversation doesn't warrant us having each other's phone numbers, I say Twitter or IG. And they'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And just keep it moving. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but it's, yeah. Go ahead. No, finish. No, no. I was just going to say sometimes like, I think with where we are, like just ask as much as you can with being respectful. Don't be crass about it. But like, you know, the best way you want, I think it's all about being connected. So how can we connect before I exit this situation? So when it comes to, um, I guess just contact information in general, do you, I guess you take your own advice too in giving it out, like have, well, let me let me reel that back. What was the time when you were like, I need to get that person's contact info, and you like actually got it? Like, do you have a specific person or somebody you want to highlight where you were like, man, I need to get their number, and then you finesse the situation and you got it? Like, how did? Can you think of a time? 
Um, I can, I don't know if I need to, I don't know. I'm like trying to think. Cause it, I feel like that's happened a couple of times. I'm <laughs> not going ahead. Um, great, gratefully. Um, yeah, but, and so, and when, when I do that, my intention is I know this isn't the place for us to deep dive. Like sometimes it's not the place and you've got to know the room. Like this is another thing about knowing the room. There's no way we're going to be at this loud party or loud event at a movie screening at this. And I'm going to be like, Hey, I'm this. And I'm, I think you're great. Like the exchange doesn't work. So sometimes I walk up to that person and depending on what the energy is like, if I start with a compliment and it needs to be real, I can go there. If it's like, Hey, I've been wanting to meet you for X, Y, Z. This is who I am. You're dope. You're amazing. I know we're in this environment now, but I'd love to stay connected. Um, I can, I can take down whatever content information is more comfortable for you. Would you do email, phone, IG? What's up? I'm like, how? and I'll like kind of be like, how's your picture taken? Like, do, am I going to double tap? Like I'll make jokes about better, like, you know, ways to connect. And I'm like, okay, wait, are you a texter? Like, you know, that same type of tone. Sometimes, I mean, I have gotten really blessed and lucky to give, let people give me their numbers <laughs> off of like that speech. And I'm like, okay, that, you know, and, and I, and I mean it because I'm like coming to you, like, you'll feel it when I'm talking to you and you, you'll feel it if I'm not like trying to do all that, which I wouldn't even do it if I'm not, but you'll know that I'm like, Hey, I genuinely want to connect, but I know we're at a screening and this doesn't make sense. And you're with your family. So X, Y, Z, but yeah, it's happened a couple of times. Like it happened with Lala Anthony. Um, there was a power event and I was like, you're not going to get five minutes with Lala right now. Like, no, because this is about her show and power is huge and everyone wants to talk to her and that's totally fine. So I just, I had just interviewed her. We had a great time on stage. I came off stage. I was like, listen, I already know like everybody's going to take you away. So let's just like exchange information right quick. And I'd love to get your info and like keep in touch. She was like, absolutely. Yeah. And we did that. And it doesn't mean you have to have like a full interview with somebody to do that. I just mean, I think it was all about the sentiment of, I know this isn't the place. I'm not going to try to take you away from what you're doing here, but I'd love to like meet you outside of this. If that's okay with you. Wow. Communication. That's essential. Yeah. That's how you're able to yeah. pivot and finesse conversations is knowing yeah. how to communicate and knowing having that spirit of discernment of like, this is the time or it's not, or, you know, I know there's also the time where it's like, I really want to talk to that person, but they may not even see me trying to talk to them or I don't want to be just standing there waiting. Which sometimes you, so that's an interesting point because sometimes it's worth making a fool out of yourself and sometimes it's not. And you do again with reading the room. Sometimes it's like, just stand there. I don't care how weird you look. I know that you're interrupting their conversation. I just did that at like probably six months ago. I remember it specifically because I was like, she is the star of this movie. There's no reason to be standing here. She does not know you, whatever. But I knew what I was going to say was going to make us connect. And because it was so like about her and so genuine to the piece and we had like cultural uh, similarities and things like that. So I was like, I'm just going to wait. And I was with a friend who was like, I'm not going to wait with you. <laughs> like I'm out. And I'm like, I get it. Totally fine. Like hang out, go move around. I think I'm just going to have to do this. And so that for me, like it was a risk and then it, it was worth it. It could have not been too. And then sometimes you're just like, they're in a conversation. It's not time. And you just have to be believe and hope that, it'll happen again where you see them again, which most times you will, you, you will see some people again. Sometimes you don't. And there's a, a billion other ways to connect in, in terms of social, but you know, sometimes it's worth making a fool of yourself in person if you can. Yeah. I don't think I've gotten there yet. <laughs> but I'll make note of that the next time. Yeah. Uh, so although I've, I've, I've been a part of like helping build your brand and just, business, life, all those things. I'm still a big fan of Stacey Ike outside of like being on the internals. So some of you may not know, but Stacey released a series called Table Talk. And I was oh actually God. there to help with production. And it was probably one of the most phenomenal days ever. It was a very long day. Yeah. But the final product of her Table Talk series was, um, I'm just trying to, I don't even know what the word is. It was just kind of like, it's like, oh my God, we did that. But then also like just the quality of the conversation was just so good. And then it involved food too. So um, fan request, um, I would love for you to uh, re-release that. Maybe we have like a 
discussion about the episodes on live or something. And I say we as in the whole Stacey I community, like we just want to hear from you. <laughs> and we, we, I think, yeah, we need to revisit that. Y'all, she's doing this on the spot. She's so petty. <laughs> like, what are your thoughts? I mean, can you, can you give us, can you give us anything with, with that? Um, I think that's, thank you. I'm a huge fan of yours as well. And um, I'm getting a little teary-eyed. Because Table Talk was such a special project for me. It was such a um, labor of love. And so it definitely like- Tell a little bit about Table Talk. Yeah, I mean, really the, the, the back back story was I was doing the own network show and it was an incredible opportunity to connect to people the way that I had always been preparing to do so and I was already doing but it became like it was a bigger platform whatever when that show got canceled I was very devastated and I couldn't not do what I was already born to do that was a very hard thing for me I'm like so what is it you just don't do it because there's no show so I think the push for that was I had a great community I had a lot of great people and leaders and influencers in my world already. And I was like, why don't I just get them together and have some great conversations? So I did an episode with guys and an episode with girls, gathered my personal team together who believed in the brand, but also really believed in like what I cared about when it came to conversation, which made that day even more special because it was just interesting how everybody's mind really connected in what the conversation was going to be back from you know, black hair conversations in Hollywood to the definition of happiness to, you know, some really hard stuff, some really, um, you know, by the time we asked, what's your next project? It was like five minutes to the end of the show. And so I just thought that was really, that really spoke to me the most that everybody was there to really connect. And so, yeah, so um, we did a, the first episode was like Logan Browning, Aisha Hines, um, Kelly Stewart, D.R. Kilpatrick, um, K.J. Smith, incredible actresses. And the second episode, had Toby Woomera, um, t- um, Terrence and Timon from uh, Queen Sugar, a lot of great actors and actresses. And so we did, like I said, two episodes, released it in like 2018, and then decided as I was kind of building and figuring out if I wanted to move forward with the project in a bigger platform, selling it, working with a different network or something like that is when I pulled it back. So I'm actually not sure what I'm doing with that right now. Or something because... <laughs> I need to do a new episode at this point. Well, for sure. I mean, you can, but I just feel like a re-release would be really dope. That's just I'm a, I'm I'm just a brand strategist. <laughs> wanted to plant that seed there, you know. You can do what you want to yeah. do. Right, right. I want to close out with some rapid fire questions. Okay. So I hope you're ready. Oh, quick yeah. fun fact: Stacy and I used to do these videos called Uncommon Paparazzi. Um, we're probably gonna do them again yeah. when we're like adults, adults. <laughs> or so whenever we feel like it but we basically would act like we're paparazzi for each other and ask <laughs> questions um, if you are that curious feel free to dm me i'll send you some videos they're pretty yeah cool. oh my gosh okay um audio book or real book who lately real book text or talk talk shop in store or online in store last thing you ordered from amazon um a water filter alkaline water filter wow girl <laughs> you're getting up there aren't you <laughs> health and wellness yeah, i'm telling you health and wellness is like everyone's priority right now i'm like i feel yeah. like an adult. i had my celery drink this morning i was like yes I need to have my vitamin i have my silver and my yep yeah are you please I'm if y'all haven't already please follow sexy she has all the recipes and Chef one take. What did I say? Chef, chef one take. One chef stays. One chef stays. One, one chef stays. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. lastly, what is love? Ooh, I was just having a conversation with my siblings about this. We were all trying to figure it out. That's really interesting you asked that. Um, I think right now love is about giving without the expectation of receiving. But I think there's so many more layers to it because like the people that I love, but also the people that I love that I've never met, like the feeling is different, but I'm sorry, the maybe, yeah, the feeling is different, but the intention is the exact same. It's like, it's just like, we are love, God is love. Like the only reason we're here is love. So it's becoming more expansive, I'm actually not, fully versed in what I think 
at this moment, but like, well, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think I have one definition and I don't think anybody should or can, but right now I think it's giving without the, the expectation of, of something in return. But I also, um, I think it's, it's an extremely patient trait as well as like, um, how do I say, gosh, love is like, it's, it's so powerful. Like I, I'm, I'm very at a loss for words because I'm trying to learn love on several different levels, yeah. self-love, love with friendships, love with parental relationships, love with um, strangers, love with career, love with like relationship to things love to I mean there's so many just I think there's so many versions with it so I don't know if all of those have the same definition or not um and I will sit on that or <laughs> grow in that as much as I can but but yeah love is I will just say it's definitely one of the most powerful powerful things in this on this planet and probably the probably but definitely the only reason we're actually here because we were all created in love yeah. and so that's like mind-blowing because you're like dang somebody loved us so much like to let us all be here and walk this earth yeah. and so like just sitting in that is definitely it's just powerful yeah definitely hashtag team love and yeah i'm not gonna answer the question who's you know yeah it's just this why not well i mean if i were to if i had to like give it one central definition i would say that love is just this I have to I connect more with the kindness and patience. Sure. I think about love because um with that comes grace as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm really big on giving people grace and I think just cuz you know I'm not necessarily talking about being in love. I think that's kind right. of like steps and you know us women that are in our um late 20s early 30s <laughs> love is definitely a topic of conversation you know right. be in love before you get married and all these different right. things right. i love humans and i love people that's just like really you don't you don't have to pay for love or you don't have to it's nothing you have to work for and mm -hmm. it's sad that some people don't know that they feel like it has to be earned yeah and, you know and that's all based on upbringings and our environments and different things like that but um yeah love is free love is patience love is kind and i think the more you love yourself the more you can love others right so, um right. i do think self-love loving yourself learning how to love yourself then helps you love others better yeah yeah how i love that i agree yeah. yeah, so to close out, what's on the menu today? Um, today's cooking today. Yes, so <laughs> you're so ridiculous. So I'm going to make like black bean soup roasted in like um, uh, red peppers. Um, in terms of like the red pepper will be the bowl of the soup. And... I'm trying you to think. Post these anywhere? Like they're yeah. Like they're the blog, You're so the website, but are you going to start posting the recipes on your blog so that people can refer back to them? I know you post them on. Instagram. We'll talk offline and forget. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, they just. But like, they're but they're on my Instagram uh, highlights right now under one chef stays. I'm so. sure everyone's always looking for good healthy recipes. And no, for sure. I I watched recipes last night for two hours. Like I was, and I could. I'm like wow, you're getting a little crazy, but I'm ex I just like, like, I'm starting to really like it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to make that. I'm thinking of making sweet potato fries on the side. And then for dessert, I want to make this like oatmeal chocolate chip butter cookie, but like this vegan type. So I just want to get the rest of the, some of the stuff right before our call. So I'm excited to try that. I, this feels very Saturday. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do all this today, but, um, cause all of those recipes kind of take a while, but that's what I was thinking. It's on the menu for today. Yes. So any last words for our audience? Uh, we definitely will have the replay available. So any way that you want everyone to connect with you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, check me out on Twitter and Instagram at one takes days. I'm mostly on Instagram because Loki, I'm like, I don't have a lot of tweets that are 140 characters and below. I don't even know what the characters are anyway. Um, but uh, what I would leave you with is, you know, if you go to my page, I'm trying to leave as many messages 
of what I'm dealing with or going through as I can. So actually I would just check those out because I think like every moment I'm feeling something, I'm talking about it as best as I can. And so a lot of that circles around how we're all operating at a time like this, how you want your May to look, how you want, um, how the past few weeks have looked, how to move forward. Um, really the relationship I'm the most concerned with and the most excited to continue to develop. I wouldn't say concern, that's the wrong word, but the most intrigued by is the one that I have with myself. And so I just encourage all of us to, since we're inside, go inside. Drops the mic. <laughs> all right. Love you all. Enjoy the rest of your Thank time. you guys for being here. Yes. Let's keep pivoting with Faith and Finesse. Yes. Yes. Love that. Thanks, Presh. I appreciate you, girl. Thanks, girl. Bye. Bye. Bye.